Dead by Daylight. We're checking out the Cursed Legacy chapter, which is the latest addition to the game. This is a DLC that expands the experience with a new killer, the Oni, and a new survivor. So we're showing off gameplay of the Oni first and the special perks. And then about halfway through we'll switch and we'll show gameplay of the new survivor. So that's kind of an interesting uh, package. So this is a really unique aspect of this, and I really love Dead by Daylight because they're constantly doing new, weird, horror-themed things, whether or not, you know, unique survivors, unique killers. They're always doing something new and something different. So with this, uh, you get the new killer, the new survivor, and an exclusive item for the survivor. There's also, and this isn't part of, like, you don't have to pay for this, is a brand new map that's kind of themed for this character. And it is so awesome to look in. It's one of my favorite levels in the game. Like, for multiplayer, it's, so this is a multiplayer experience. So the Ani is a new killer. Uh, that's what we're playing as right now. A former samurai corrupted by the entity and turned into a dark reflection of his inner angst. A hideous creature of rage and embodiment of wrath and cruelty that rains terror upon his victims. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so with this character, you primarily get this awesome sword. It's super great for stabbing and slashing and dashing. And then you get the ability to kind of absorb blood. So it fits into the game beautifully well actually I was shocked by it. it was like this mechanic makes perfect sense so basically what you're doing is uh, attacking survivors obviously like usual trying to hook them no surprise there but now when you hit them or you damage them or anything like that uh, blobs of blood show up in the air and then you're able to absorb these uh, these circles of blood these little spheres of blood and then you're able to uh, what I was doing right now, use them into going into a blood fury, and in the blood fury you get like this giant bat thing, which is just crazy to use. I prefer the sword though, I find it's got a little bit better of a finesse and damage to it. Uh, but the club is really awesome, and you can do like sort of a, a charged sprint, or you can do just like a big hammer strike on the ground. And it's really cool to kind of see that uh, be unleashed, because it's like somewhat of an entirely different killer once you get into this blood fury mode it, it really does change things up i also love the aesthetics of the character the look of it it's scary it's creepy it's dark and aesthetically it's entirely different than what you're used to in the game and that's again the magic of dead by daylight really is the fact that this is an ultimate sort of horror game you know all these different iconic franchises and then unique characters and I think this is like a really really cool addition to the game it's something I hadn't really anticipated or even expected seeing and I honestly when I first saw it I was kind of like eh, it's okay so so but now that I'm playing as the character like even the first match I was like oh I don't know about this as the killer uh, you know and then I got in and I played another match after I got used to him and I'm like wow this guy is really cool and actually quite powerful if you know how to handle him Cause I'm pretty sure it just like sort of dominate the survivors in this particular match but you get what I'm saying it's like a really neat looking character and I think I got the big club thing out right now and I'm just kind of showing off what it can do with the big smash and uh, you get the idea of what I'm saying is like this is a really unique character that does something a little bit different as a killer and I think that mixes up the action a bit because you know you're always looking for something new when you're playing as a killer there are so many options and so many great packs so many iconic horror monsters and creatures and stuff and this one still so many DLC packs later feels completely unique and different uh, from the others and I think that's a really cool thing and this sword is beautifully powerful. I love it. I also like that the absorption doesn't really uh, detract from what you're doing in the game. You can use it while you're moving around and you know cutting people and everything like that, and just be sinking in this absorption to get into the super rage. You're sort of a I don't know medium speed is fair to say. You know you're not slow, but it's like a big stalking monster in the distance, and I think that's really really neat and something that is distinct and fresh and fun to play as. I think it shouldn't be too hard to get used to this character. I know it's ranked as a, I believe it's ranked as a fairly difficult one uh, skill-wise to get into, but I don't know. I, I don't think it's too bad. You get a good amount of abilities. He's not, he seems well-balanced in my opinion. You know, there's a good sense of balance there between 
him and uh, the survivors that are going around. I just so happen to do well in this particular match of it. I think as I finish off the final guy here in a sec. Yeah, I don't know. But we'll get talking about the, the second part of this, which is coming up in just a little bit here. So, the second aspect of this is a new survivor. Yui, Yui Kimiro? Kimiro? Yui Kimura. Sorry, I'm terrible with some names. A rebel against traditions, a protector to those who cannot protect themselves, an exceptional motorcyclist who suddenly finds herself in an endless race for her life. <gasps> you also get Yui's pink striped top as an exclusive cosmetic item. Isn't that exciting? So yeah, that's, that's the gist of what the pack provides. I mean, we're seeing the uh, the human character here. Well, the survivor character. Can you call the samurai human if they've turned into a weird possessed entity monster? I'm not sure. Anyways, I really like the the look of this character. Getting the, the aesthetics aspect. She's a really cool vibe. Uh, I don't know, I, I quite liked seeing her in the matches. Some decent perk options that I think are interesting. And uh, generally played quite well. I mean, I'm not used to really playing as different survivors. I'm kind of locked in with the one that I've prestiged in a bit. Um, actually, I think I might be on my second prestige or third. Anyways, uh, yeah, so it, it's definitely different to be playing as another character. And she's got like a cool vibe. Definitely nails the uh, the motorcycle -ist style. And I think that works very well. And it was you know, it was nice to mix up and uh, see this character go in action as we played a uh, quite a number of matches. I worked all the way towards uh, you know using being able to use all the perks and getting the achievement going. It took quite a while because you know not everybody's extremely helpful. But I did actually win a little bit more than usual with this character. It might have just been the, the situation of the night, but I did find her particularly useful and the perks to be a, a rather interesting sort of boost option for survival. That's just one match. We're showing off an, another one with her as well. Just kind of want to show off the vibe of what the character looks like. So, somewhat like of a typical Japanese motorcyclist, if that's like a typical thing. I'm assuming in films and stuff it kind of is, but yeah, you get the gist of what I'm meaning. Uh, so yeah, neat character. Fun addition, uh, good movement to the clothing, it's fabrics that are actually kind of like sway around and stuff as you're going everywhere. So I think that's nice, uh, looks cool, it's an interesting addition to the roster. And I think generally this is a fairly good pack that's added to Dead by Daylight. Um, if you're looking for something new, I highly suggest it. Great survivor character if you're looking for a new survivor to play as. Really interesting killer if you want someone else to like you know, test your abilities killing-wise. Uh, I think they picked a pretty good option and created something that's really cool looking. I mean, even when you see the character in motion, the killer, it's, it's super, super neat. Like, just, you know, like a stocky, silent, dark monster that's just lumbering along in big armor. So yeah, generally, I did quite enjoy this pack. Um, I think it's quite worthwhile. And I have played a large... Well, not a large number, but I've played a decent number of like the actual DLC content in this game, and I've seen characters and stuff in action, and they do a really good job, and I think they sort of nailed this weird warrior monster, and then this gal here is actually a pretty cool addition. It doesn't really go too far beyond that, but in general, they also added uh, the new map kind of rotation area, which is just a free thing, so you don't even have to buy the pack in order to get access to that map. And it's got like a really neat vibe to it, just like these, I guess you could say shrines, or just purely Japanese style aesthetic buildings. Really tall uh, plants and flora that you can actually truly hide in, and not like this stuff, like actual full body. And I've even had killers like walk by me and it not notice that I was actually there. So I found that really helpful and useful and very cool map, so hopefully you get to see that one, regardless of whether you jump in on this, because that one is certainly neat aesthetically. Um, keep saying that, but it, it truly is just like a remarkable sight to take in playing on that map. And then these characters, when you throw them on there too, it fits very well. Because, I mean, it is their setting, but you get what I'm saying. Anyways, definitely enjoyed this. A uh, little bit more action as we do work with this character. Will she escape? Who knows? But yeah, that's the Dead by Daylight Cursed Legacy chapter. I guess they called them uh, the next step, and I can't wait to see what they do down the road.